Hey guys, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Jose Salazar. Very excited to talk to you guys today. You know that I'm a big fan of that guy right there. Dr. Doom, no. Jean-Paul Leon. If I could have a channel just of Jean-Paul Leon, it would be the Jean-Paul Leon YouTube channel. I'd do it. That's what I'm talking about. You know I love Alex Toth, right? I've been doing all these videos with Alex Toth. Still have to finish those. There's still like three more I gotta do. Uh, I got a little, I got a little maxed on my toth, <laughs> so I had to like distance a little bit. So I'm reading some manga. I will get back to the toth, but this is toth incarnate. I shouldn't say that. Maybe it's not toth reincarnated, but I love this guy's work. I love Jean Paulion. He studied toth. He's a toth devotee. I'm a devotee of both of these guys. I love his freaking work. And today I want to talk about more of it. I found this in the quarter bin. A travesty. A a a a insult to the comic world to have this in the damn quarter bin. But I found it. I was like, what? Jump a Leon with Kurt Busiak doing a Batman? Blah, 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 blah. And this was a four part story. I didn't even know about this or a three part. I don't know. This is part three. So I picked it, I'm like, I'm grabbing this. And I, I'm like, yeah, we gotta do it because I'm, I'm a big fan of all this stuff. And uh, I love it. It's just freaking good. It's, um, Let's just talk about it. Let's just get down in the art and let's talk about it. And it's gonna be hard to talk about the story because again, this is book three of, I don't know, maybe three or four. So it there's more to this that I don't know about, but I don't give a crud because I'm all about Jean Balloon. Okay, did you guys figure that out yet? So let me flip it, dip it, and let's check out Jean Balloon's art because it's badass. There you go. Okay, everybody. Thank you, boys and girls, for checking out the channel, The Art of Comics, where we do various things. One of them is we do deep dives and kind of like look at the art, study the art, and talk about choices, art choices. Batman, Creature of the Night, Book 3, DC Comics, Kurt Busiak. He did, he's done some great work, guys. Um, great work. And Astro City. We should talk about Astro City one day. And Jean-Paul Leon. Jean-Paul Leon, big fan of his. Uh, I'm a fan freak. I'm a freaking fan. Okay, um, and I don't know when this was published. Let me see real quick. Some of you care, some of you don't. Uh, published 2000, what? 2018? Oh, this is new. Okay, I didn't know. Maybe that's why I haven't heard of it. So, this is new, guys. This is, um, Creatures of the Night, number three, June 2018. Okay, that's awesome. So, Let's talk about it. Um, the story's a little... I'm not too hip on the story, but it's kind of like an Elseworlds where Wayne is connected psychically with this other personage, spirit, whatever, who's the Batman. So there, it's almost like this ghost twin of his is the Batman. He's not himself the personage of Batman. He's connected to this psychically to this Batman guy. So it's a little different, right? But let's just talk about like art and things like that. And we'll talk about story too, of course. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the cursive. I mean, I get it. I understand that it's like kind of journal-ish, but I'm not a big fan of it. It just makes it harder to read. So a little bit of a minus on that. One of the great things about John Paul Leon that I really love that is that I appreciate from just a time perspective is the backgrounds. He very rarely will just give you some blank ass background. He puts in stuff. He makes every panel lived in in full, just like Toth, just like other people, Wally Wood, what have you. That's old school great stuff, okay? He did not have to do, he could have like, I'll show you spots where he could have just like put a freaking talking head, but he puts in all this stuff, which I really appreciate. Um... I do like his little dry brush elements, things like that. This is just a great opening here. I don't even like color holds, but that works just freaking fine. Who is the colorist? I should maybe throw that out there too. I don't want to shut it. John, he colored it. Okay, I didn't know that he colored stuff. I, mean, I knew he knew how, but okay, that's even better then. Um, I love these this this positioning of the heads. I love this this background. It works. Um, 
even something like this hand that's tilted off a little bit to the side, just to give it a little bit more um, dynamic, dynam, dynamoism. Um, yeah, this is just good stuff, dude. Here's his action. This is good here. This here, all these like lines. You're trying to look at for lines, right? So we're reading here, we read this line, we go in here, right? This coming down. So you're kind of looking for lines and things like that. Um, I'm a big fan of his art, his colors too. It's very, a um, little bit of muted. It's not super saturated. It works really well for this place. Great reference on these little steps and things like that. This is a great little um, environment that I like a lot. And even things like this. You know, there's other guys that are similar to Jean Paulion, like uh, Tommy Edwards, um, even Michael Lark, um, Sean Phillips. There's this kind of crew that kind of have that, this kind of a, a I'm going to say style which has this final, uh, a little bit of like heavy brushed, you know, lines and simple and kind of jagged and some geometric kind of shapes, really blocking this into shapes. Not a lot of like organic, smooth, creamy, you know, brushy, brushy stuff. This is a lot more, you know, um, little geometric, I don't wanna say harsher, but just like a little more angular. I really like these faces. This is what I think he's great at. And this also reminds me of some kind of Toth stuff. And then this is just a great composition too, by the way. This whole this whole deal where you have this and these great, these great little frames here. These are just super narrow and tall like that. This is actually harder to do, you might think. You might think, oh, it's easy to do. This is actually a really challenge to get all the pieces you want to fit in this little narrow space. You know, and sometimes they'll make it to where it's like one image and they just kind of slice it up, but this is actually different images and it's zoomed in, it looks like, from what I'm gathering. Uh, which is another nice little effect that people do in comics. Look at this background here. This is all done, dude. He did not, he did not pussyfoot around with this. He rendered this, he drew this, you know, and he had to freaking ink all this and color it. Notice the flat colors too. Again, huge fan. You don't need to put on this jacket five different types of blues to get that it's like three-dimensional shape. It's not needed. The line work will give you that three-dimensional shape in space relative to everything else. You don't need to do all that. So I'm a big fan of flat colors. I'm just a fan. Um, just the positionings. This is just great stuff. It's just... Oh, and he's like, he's recounting the story. So you get his like face there and it just changes slightly. He could have, he could have phoned it in and just put the same damn thing, right? He could have put the same face and just photoshopped, you know, copy and paste it, but he didn't. He just changed it up just a little bit to give it a little bit more reality. Here's a good example of how you show distance and stuff like simplicity. So we're putting a lot of detail in him, but then you see the background figures just our outline shapes here too, you know, and we get, that's what I'm talking about, these angular blocky kind of like shapes. We know that's a guy talking on the phone. We don't need to see the hair's strands. All that's distracting to what were important. What's important is this here, this conversation. So just a little cool techniques to like draw the eye. Because the eye goes where all the action is, where all the lines are, where all that, right? So that's where the eye's going. Um, this is again, I like the shat the, sh the shadowing he does. It's really good. Good stuff. Again, the color choices. I really like the colors. It's kind of really warm colors here. Just monochromatic, just blanket. And then we go into here with these cools and greens and things and then there's a little shop. You kind of see these different charlatans trying to get a rise out of people. Yeah, really heavy, thick. There's an artist who did a comic called Loveless with um, Azarello and 
That's not Libra Human. It's somebody loveless. It reminds me a little bit of that too. Um, he's like, he's European. It's got a Z in it. It's a has or something. I don't know. Um, if I could remember it. Comment below if you guys remember that, what I'm talking about, Loveless, Western comic with Brian Azzarello, DC Comics, I think it was. Um, he's got that kind of a style too, a little bit. More so though, he kind of exaggerates it. Jean-Paul keeps it in this like grand reality. This is a great panel, look at this composition. Look at this here, this is really good. And notice here, we're focusing in on uh, Wayne, who, which has got the full blacks. And then the color hold into a brown, the background, right? So those kind of recede in the background, shows that depth, that depth perception, right? Atmospheric uh, perspective, it's called. Um, yeah, really dig that. And just a simple little bit of grass over the headstone, the lamp, you know. This is a great, that's a great panel. Stuff too here is great. Yeah, dude, I could sit here and we could just sit here and talk about this all day. Cause it's, I could, I consider him one of the best, dude. I consider him a master of storytelling, of rendering, draftsmanship, you know, and he, and he's, I haven't seen anything that he does that's kind of like otherworldly, you know, fantasy, high adventure in that way. It's usually these kind of really grounded stories like, like this, uh, like uh, Winter, Winterman, you know, there's some other books he's done, some other Batman stuff. It's always kind of this street level stuff. And it's just, I think it's because his backgrounds and the costuming and clothing he's, put, he's putting people in, it just is really well done. It looks really real. It's a great little page here. This is nice. I like this a lot too. Simple. Great use of darks and blacks. Yeah. This is all a lot of fun. This is Batman kind of. This is a great perspective here. This is a great because this is really hard actually. This is a very, very steep right there. It's really good. So I'm a fan, you guys. You gotta get some Jean Paul Leon. If this is your first introduction to him, do yourself a favor, go look him up, go find out what, you know, I would definitely recommend Winterman. Um, and, and some of his different Batman like one-offs and things he's done. He did also a thing called, um, um, by DC is like Mother something. It's another kind of Batman spinoff. I can't remember it. Yeah, big fan of his stuff. So there you go. Little video. You can't go wrong with this guy. He's the he's he's one of the best out there right now. He's not super pro prolific. You're not going to find tons of stuff by him. But the stuff you see, it is good it's classic it is worthy of your attention so there you go thanks you guys for watching my videos i appreciate it appreciate all the subscribers and people who check out my patreon all that kind of stuff be careful be safe and be happy bye guys